In February 2014, former FIFA World Cup star players and U.S. Department of State Sports United soccer envoys Linda Hamilton and Tony Sané spent an intensive week in Bangladesh. Hamilton, a starter for the 1991 FIFA Women's World Cup champion team, and Sané, a player in the 2002 FIFA World Cup, led youth outreach, soccer clinics, and exhibition games with the Bangladesh Football Federation. Their work aimed to build bridges between Americans and Bangladeshis, and also helped the Bangladesh Football Federation qualify for the 2022 World Cup. We can affect some sort of a enthusiasm and change to help start something in 2022. Maybe you will have several players up there, and I think that the most important thing I'll start, even not having seen what's happening, I would tell you the most important thing you could do for your kids right now is fundamentally technical training. Technical training at a low level so that they get used to moving like soccer players. You need real investment in the youth and the young players. So you can't just say you want something to happen unless you, you know, do the work to get there. So I think with the size of the country and the amount of zest and flavor for football, if they invest in infrastructure and in fields and in coaches and opportunities, then they have every chance to make it. I learned more from all of my failures than my successes, to be honest, because it made me want to work harder to be better. We played to only seven goals. Seven goals, but first team to six wins, okay? Seven goals. Linda and Tony kick off their soccer clinics, which are focused on training the Federation's junior leagues in hopes of creating future World Cup teams. Their training focuses on the technical, tactical, physical, and psychological dimensions of each player. Look at us on the field. This could be like in midfield, right? Yeah. Right? Because you don't have sidelines. I'm not giving you sidelines. Does that under do you understand? So it's sort of like what happens in midfield that gets crowded, but we can create. Oh, sorry. We can create angles. Today is uh, they are come from America. They are uh, little football player in American. So we are learning from them for how to develop the grassroots. Uh, youth development, grassroots uh, technique, they are show us. Prana Ashwani Jeta Chachchan Sheta Ocha Jee Bacchara Dere Khane Aamadheer Desher Bacchara Dere Kibhaave Training Kore Shee Training Tar Ekta Dharana Nite Aamun Ta Dere Problem Goli Kye Eta Find Out Kore Tar Solution Kye Dawa Jai Eta Chesta Kore Chai Aske Aamar Kuri Anand Lak Se Karun America Dere Ya Foreigner Kho Chachche ধাক্কা <laughs> সুতরাং এখানে আমাদের যে লক্ষ্য সে লক্ষ্য পূরণ করতে গেলে আমাদের যে ডেভেলপমেন্ট ওয়ার্ক এবং তারই একটা অংশ হিসাবে যেটা আজকে আমরা ফেস্টিভ মোডে আজকে আগামী চার দিন আমরা এটা পালন করছি ঘটবে তো যেহেতু আমরা একটা মাইন্ড সেট ঠিক করেছি এই জন্য আমাদেরকে সবাই ইন্সপিরেশান দেওয়ার জন্য শুধু ইউএসএ থেকে এবং অন্যান্য দেশ থেকেও আমাদেরকে এসে তারা ইন্সপায়ার করছে Kids are having fun, uh, learning new things. Actually, when, when we go, we train most kids. We want to focus on uh, the technical aspects. No matter, every soccer player in the world thinks they're a genius, but they forget to start at the beginning.
The envoys head north to the country's premier sports academy, BKSP, the Bangladesh Institute of Sports. Many of its students are on the verge of being recruited into Bangladesh's major football leagues. We have a uh, sports platform and we, we, we assess the players, uh, their strength or their movement, dynamic movement. Yeah. And so we have the device, the six cameras and connecting with their computer. this German, Ireland, and uh, England. When do I that we have you? And when does this one get completed? It's yeah, all, now it's, it's almost complete. Work in progress. It will be fully operational in November. The good thing, and you can acknowledge this too, the good thing about this is it's actually faster. Yeah. So it feels more like it fits off. So the, the age group that I, we were expecting, they are going to get admitted. That's it, it's going to no problem, we'll work together. These guys are fantastic. We can do it all together. But you can also use together. that field across on that side. We are now at BKSP in Savar. That stands for the Bangladesh Institute of Sports. And Tony and Linda are working with uh, some of Bangladesh's premier uh, young athletes. The majority of people who go to BKSP, who train at BKSP, end up uh, playing for pro leagues in Bangladesh. So this really is the next generation of pro football players here in Bangladesh. I want to see you guys be more composed. Confident. <laughs> The bronze. second Women's yeah. World Cup bronze. bronze. Well, we first tried to do some technical work to try to assess their abilities, and um, from there we moved into some more functional training to try to teach them to spread out a little bit, work on possession, be a little more confident on the ball, and, and try to see the field. And then we finished with some 11 v 11 to see how they incorporated it. These guys are very organized technically. They work really hard, listen, very disciplined, uh, and they have a very special situation. Uh, anywhere in the world when you can become fine and get this much soccer training and tie it to education these kids are going to be successful so I think the discipline you know surrounding them in all of life is going to give them the most opportunities not only on the soccer field but I think in life as well so the ones that don't play soccer are still have a bright future <laughs> Day 3. After training with the Federation, Linda leads outreach with high school students from Dhaka's expat community at American International School Dhaka. defense now yellow is you just passed it to the defender uh, well we're lucky enough to have uh, an next professional come out Linda Hamilton and she's teaching our girls spacing because it's something we really need to work on and um, she's frank and candid with them and it's going really well so far well we've just been doing some training there was a middle school team that I did some things with and this is their varsity team just trying to interact and teach them a little bit about possession and opening up in field space um, she's managed to get the girls to have more touches in about a half an hour than I could in two entire practices. So every girl's getting several hundred touches on the ball and working on agility, which is one of my weak points. So It was really interesting actually. I think for at least the girls, we all saw how much we actually have to work on, at least with spacing. 
because like you tell them one thing but when they actually see it and from an external source they actually see they're only using like one third of the field versus the entire field I think it was a very educational experience for everyone and including myself and the skill level is a little different obviously we've been working with the Federation kids um, these girls aren't quite as technically or quite as advanced but their enthusiasm is great and and they've come from all over the world they come from I made them tell me they were from China and Korea and all over, there's probably 15 countries named. So it's just sort of a unique mix and it's a high school team. So when you guys now watch football, I want you to really watch, you guys can enjoy the game and watch some of those fun volleys and diving headers. It was a lot of fun. Everyone lo everyone loved her, the way she talked and the way she explained things. She was a lot of fun. She was really nice. Sounds weird, but it sounds like him. <laughs> <laughs> What'd your parents do with me? Oh my God. So the cool As Linda's was, training goes on, Tony heads to the Jago Foundation, a school for underprivileged children in the Ryer Bazaar slum. Because of the, the ground and the level and they really want to play, I think we should take them off in like groups of, you know, six to ten. Okay. And bring them on the side. And okay. maybe we'll teach them, maybe we'll just do some heading exercises. Okay. And teach them how to head the ball. Mm -hmm. And then they can head for five, ten minutes and then, and then, and then, and then okay. rotate and go back. And then some of the volunteers okay. also can have here, okay. throw in the balls and have them heading because we have extra balls. So um, that way they can all stay more active. That evening, the duo meet football fans at the U.S. Embassy's American Space in Dhaka's University District, the Edward M. Kennedy Center for Public Service and the Arts. Uh, what are U.S.'s chances in the next World Cup in Brazil? When they will come up against, I mean, Germany, <laughs> Portugal, and Ghana? Well, it all comes down to the first game. If they win the first game, they have a good chance. And the way I look at it is, if we beat Ghana, which will be a difficult task, but I think both teams are, are pretty equal, actually. Definitely, some of those stereotypes hold a little more true. The Brazilians are 1v1, um, but they lack the tactical connectivity with the Norwegians or Viking women that hit long balls. So today's event was excellent. Uh, first of all, the feedback was wonderful and uh, yeah, getting an opportunity to talk and sit and take pictures with uh, real life FIFA football players is very good. So uh, I think the, today's event was really wonderful and we should get more events like this which would give opportunities to Bangladeshi people and uh, students like us to talk and interact with international football players. It's Tony and Linda's last day in Dhaka, but before their final exhibition games, they lead a workshop with Madrasa students from the English Access Micro Scholarship Program. Almost! Still two zero. I think it shows a little more support uh, in some ways of these guys coming. They all said they had the support of their families, and I think that shows a good thing that they're female and have some support for their family. So I definitely think it shows with the soccer growing and, and the culture. <laughs> very good, very good, very good. Very good. So this is the gold medal that we won in the 94 CONCACAF qualifying to get ready for the 95 World Cup. You guys can pass it. This will go in other order. This is the gold medal from the very first ever Women's World Cup in China.
It's time for the final men's and women's exhibition games. Tony's and Linda's students, players from the Bangladesh Football Federation Junior League, will play matches with Premier League players. So we're 10 minutes into the first game, it's the women's exhibition match, and we're seeing what all the workshop participants have learned over the week with Linda. Coming here to this and, and seeing sports diplomacy uh, at work, you know, this is what my job's all about. I, as ambassador of the United States of America, I'm here and I'm here to build bridges. And I, I've made a real priority of reaching out and engaging with the people of Bangladesh. And to that end, I'm visiting all 64 districts. So I'm working really hard. When you want to know something, I'm a lousy ambassador. The really good ambassadors are our sports ambassadors. And right now we have Linda Hamilton here. We have Tony Sana here. These are American football stars. They're here. They're engaging with young Bangladeshi football players. The sports is truly universal, and soccer of all sports, I think, more than anything, as a global sport. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what language you're speaking. You get on the field and you play. And then for the for the children and, and young people participating, uh, it's such a great opportunity not only to learn the skill from some of the best, uh, you know, Tony and Linda are legends in the game. When I have the ball, one come two, one go away. I look this, one, okay? Let's go. We pass the ball like training. Fast, fast, fast. When we lose the ball, everybody back. Everybody back, okay? Okay? All right. One, two, three, win. One, two, three, win! It's great for the young boys to see World, World Cup stars and you know, mingle with them. It's a great opportunity for them. I'm glad that they had the opportunity to do that. I can't run like I used to, so being able to play with kids still and be in a more advisory role and mentor them and help them make the right decisions is, is always uh, great that you're still useful. Um, you know, the level is, is it's different when you're playing um, for fun. Uh, because at this age, I think it's more about teaching and less about winning. But we did win, for the record, we did win. I didn't really care who won, but I'm really glad we won. Hopefully I helped it, those couple of women today, and from then they go back and maybe they're younger sisters, and, and it helps to spread. But my favorite experience has been my ability to meet so many new people, and I feel like I have a lot of friends in Bangladesh now. I mean, it's a beautiful game, and you can go anywhere in the world, it's going to connect cultures. So, um, you know, it's been very kind to me. Um, and you see the way, you know, it brings people together. And both teams today, after the game, you realize everybody on that field, whether they played or watched, was happy. You know? And that's very powerful. You know, bringing all these people together for one emotion and happiness. And that's soccer. Football is, is very special in that way. We're planning, we're can we just this like, can we just get this bottle I next to me. this man? I would just like the contrast. Look, we're in the land of giants. Look, this is a. I think we should have had an embassy team against a local team before we all got to play together. Wow. This is really rough. This is so good too, like a homemade tortilla.